Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we focus on the cattle markets. From the ups and downs of last year to the optimism of 2020 as it gets underway, we visit with Randy Block, the CEO of Cattle Facts. We also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, the Kansas Farm Bureau, and our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and Paragon Ag Advisors. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, with the signing of the phase one deal with China, the fate of the third tranche of market facilitation 2.0 payments is reportedly up in the air. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue is wanting to wait and see how this phase one deal unfolds before making a decision. But key farm state lawmakers strongly encouraging USDA to distribute the aid this month since the deal with China has yet to result in a boost of commodity prices. Moreover, President Trump has repeatedly and emphatically promised the full $16 billion in trade aid, so it's hard to imagine that that would not be fulfilled. The Trump administration is expected to finalize a rule replacing the definition of what waters fall under the jurisdiction of the Clean Water Act. The new Waters of the U.S. or WOTUS rule was sent to the White House Office of Management and Budget for review in early December. The new rule is expected to be finalized this month or next and is expected to adhere closely to the Supreme Court rulings that limit the reach of the Clean Water Act to navigable and interstate waters and adjacent wetlands. Well, the January World Ag Supply and Demand Estimate numbers show that the final 2019 corn yield for the U.S. came in at an average of 160 bushels an acre, nearly two bushels above what the industry had estimated. Total corn production, 13.7 billion bushels, up 31 million, as the higher yield more than offset a reduction in harvested acres. That totaled 81.5 million acres. Well, soybean production came in at 3.56 billion bushels, 8 million larger on higher yield results. The yield estimates were 47.4 bushels per acre, harvested acres at 75 million. That was down slightly from the previous report. Now, corn for grain production in Kansas, based on the year-end surveys, estimated at a record high 801 million bushels. That's up 25 percent from 2018, according to USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service. The yield of 133 bushels per acre, up four bushels from last year. The area harvested was at 6.02 million acres of corn for grain. It's up 21 percent from 2018. Sorghum for grain production in 2019 estimated 204 million bushels, down 13 percent from 2018. The yield 85 bushels per acre, down three bushels from a year earlier. Now, soybean production for 2019 totaled 186 million bushels, down 8 percent from 2018. The yield 41 and a half bushels per acre, down 1.5 bushels from last year. More on these and other stories can be found online at agview.net. Stay with us. We'll have more after these messages. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed, Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? 
The Oldie Seed Know to Grow research program has fully tested the latest seed genetics and soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. And our guest is Randy Block, the president and CEO of Cattle Facts, and uh, we caught up with him at the KLA meeting in Wichita, and it seems like it's kind of our annual old home week. We always uh, want to uh, get your take, but thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. This is, a, this is always a great week for me to be able to come over to Kansas and see all the producers, uh, feeders, and cow calf stocker operators. Uh, it's a great spot in our industry. Well, I don't know how many years you've been here, but it's been an awful lot, I think. But uh, it, you're almost, it's almost like coming home, though, for you. It is. You know, I started my career covering the Kansas feed yards and the industry over here. So I grew up with a lot of the producers in the room, and uh, they taught me a lot. And hopefully over time I've been able to share a few insights with them as well. Well, Randy, let's kind of get into uh, what you presented to producers, give an overall outlook, uh, kind of an only for uh, livestock but also for grains looking at all the numbers but uh, let's go back at 2019 and I think we'll all agree that uh, there were two or three issues that really uh, brought challenges I think that's the right word and, and probably the biggest one later this year the, the fire at Holcomb really took people for a loop and, yeah. uh, and, and the mark you know, we had a number of them. I think as you go back to the start of 2019, the biggest thing was weather. It was so wet. It was so cold. I mean, pen conditions were very difficult for, through the whole central and northern plains of the United States. Very, very difficult. One of the most difficult winters that we've had and springs as we saw that impact into our grain production. So that created a lot of volatility. It created some issues that had a long tail to them. I mean, we didn't see cattle performance come back for months in here until we really got through the summer and got into the fall. So I know everybody that was running a feeding operation was glad to see the winter and, and that incredibly wet spring kind of move away. We look, as we look at 2020, we think we're going to have a situation where the weather patterns are going to be much more benign. Mm -hmm. Nothing extreme. Uh, we're going to have some cold, but not going to have anywhere near the type of winter moisture that we had a year ago that created problems in our feed yards. But still adequate moisture for our grazing operations and our growing operations for our corn and wheat producers into the summer. Where are we at with the cycle right now? Because it seems like as we look at, we see the numbers coming out from USDA, we see intentions of, of, of heifer retention and so on. Is there a good spot of where we are in the cycle right now? Great question. I think a year ago, as we shared with your listeners, that the numbers are going to flatten out. And that's exactly what they've done. The numbers are flattening out. We can all argue, are they up 50,000? Are they down 50,000? It doesn't matter. The bottom line is the lion's share of the growth in this cattle cycle is, is already in place. And as we look down the road the next several years, I think you're going to see the herd flatten out. We've got a few more dairy animals that are making their way into our fed cattle production system. I think there's maybe been a little bit of misinterpretation of some of the heifer slaughter numbers mm -hmm. as a result of that, that we're actually seeing more of those dairy animals that are moving into our fed animal fed system and as F1 crosses. So we look for fed slaughter to continue to increase again in 2020. It'll be up another quarter of a million head. We'll have another 100,000 head of cows that we'll have to harvest as we move forward, but very predictable numbers. Okay. Randy Block, President and CEO of Cattle Facts, is joining us. Let's take a break. Be back with more in just a moment. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum. 
growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net, serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. Agview.net. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Our guest is Randy Block, the President and CEO of Cattle Facts at the KLA meeting in Wichita. And uh, you know, we talked about the winter that was. We're now into winter 2020. But, uh, but let, let's talk about uh, you know, when we got that, uh, that call that weekend of the, of the fire at Holcomb and uh, the market, uh, did they overreact? Did, 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 uh, uh, you know, but the impact it had was, uh, was long lasting. Well, it was. And I would tell you that. You know, I pulled our staff together and we analyzed the impact of the fire uh, that Saturday and Sunday after the fires. We were starting to pull the facts, we could look at the numbers. I would tell you the market did a excellent job of incentivizing the balance of the packers and the rest of the hook space to figure out a way to harvest more cattle than we'd harvested on weekends and however we had to do it. And the only way you do that is to send an economic signal to figure it out, guys. And that signal was strong enough to, to actually move these production levels to levels that we were only under harvesting roughly 10,000 head of cattle a week. Which was amazing. Which is just absolutely amazing. So I think there's a real lesson in here. I think first of all, that was bit, that was, that is our Achilles heel in the industry. We don't have enough harvest capacity. If we run into an event like that, that's a big deal. We thought it would impact our markets uh, between four and five percent from a leverage standpoint. The actual number as of last week was four point six percent. So I think our analysts did a fantastic job of analyzing the impact of it. The plant's back online now. It'll crank up. It'll be back up to full capacity as we work through the month and on into January. So we've, again, and we've only backed up 75,000 head of cattle right. plus or minus. It's, it's an insignificant number, absolutely an insignificant number. So I would just say never underestimate how efficient these markets are in being able to work through these challenges in the industry. I know there were some people that were were out of position when the fire hit. Obviously, that's unfortunate, but again, now the markets are moving back into a normal path. As we always like to do with you, we want to kind of get that short, mid, and long-range look as we look at 2020. Well, I would just tell you 2020, there's one big thing that I think is going to be on, needs to be on everybody's, two really big things that need to be on the radar screen. Swine fever, the impact of it is here. We're seeing record imports of beef, pork, and poultry into China from suppliers all around the globe. China imports will be up over 3 billion pounds this year. The U.S. doesn't have great access to China with anything other than pork. We just got poultry into that market, so that'll be a, be a boost to us. We'll see whether we get a trade deal with China for beef that mm -hmm. gives us expanded access. If that happens, that's a big deal. The other thing relative to this is how strong our demand has been. So we think demand has been, has carried today, domestic demand has really carried today through 20, 2019. We think both domestic and export demand will be strong in 2020. So the bottom line with this is we think our markets are going to be well supported. We'll have fed cattle prices that average in the upper teens, range in here from about 130 at the highs back down around $1.05 at the lows. So pretty much like we've been the last several years. Maybe we can sneak a little time into the low 30s, but that's basically the range. 
feeder cattle prices averaging in the mid 140s, similar to what they have the last few years, range from the mid to high 50s down into the low 30s. And calf prices, very little change in here, averaging around in the mid 160s. So again, the cow-calf producer is still profitable, which is critical. We need to keep the cow-calf producers profitable. I believe we're going to keep the cow-calf industry in total profitable through the balance of the cycle. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. In 2019, despite a lot of the other challenges uh, we had with weather, uh, commodity prices, and that, there were some important wins at the federal and state level with respect to the corn industry. First and foremost would be the, the year-round uh, implementation of uh, E15 that allows year-round sales there. Uh, in fact, this was the first summer driving season that we saw in Kansas that allowed year-round E15 sales, and our E15 sales numbers were up 40% year over year with that. And in fact, some of our higher performing stations offering ethanol blends continue to see growth rates of ethanol sales at 60% a year. Uh, you know, no, obviously another very important win for agriculture was the house passage of the USMCA, US-Mexico-Canada trade agreement with uh, Mexico being our largest market for corn and uh, Canada being the second largest market actually for ethanol imports and we see some great potential in both of those markets uh, moving forward from there. You know, uh, uh, 2019 saw the first year full implementation of the, the, the farm bill that we all had a lot of the agricultural groups had a lot of uh, influence on where it was and you know at the state level we're proud to uh, support efforts to uh, provide health insurance options that are more affordable for rural Kansas as well as some streamlining of our transportation regulation. For continued updates, progresses, and where we're looking at for 2020, uh, please go to kscorn.com for more information. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Kansas Commodity Classic will be held on Friday, January 24th at the K-State Alumni Center in Manhattan. The Kansas Commodity Classic is the annual convention of Kansas's top crops, corn, wheat, grain sorghum, and soybeans. Registration and breakfast begin at 7.30 a.m. Thanks to the generous support of the Kansas Corn, Wheat, Green Sorghum, and Soybean Associations and our sponsors, registration is free for farmers and friends. Register at kansascommodityclassic.com 
to receive your parking pass. Lieutenant Governor Lynn Rogers will kick off the event with an update from the Kansas Governor's Office. John Felt, founder and president of Blue Water Outlook, will provide a weather outlook. Blue Water Outlook provides a wide variety of information to help provide informed decisions for farm management. Blue Water Outlook is focused on two primary areas of emphasis, water resources insight and intelligence, and decision support services. Elected officials have been invited to give updates from Washington, including the Senate Ag Committee, a trade outlook, farm bill update, and other pertinent issues affecting Kansas farmers. Dr. Alan Gray, director of the Center for Food and Ag Business at Purdue University, will end the day with a presentation on capitalizing on the greatest sustainability story in history. Thanks to our generous sponsors, the January 24th event is free to attend and includes a complimentary breakfast and lunch. However, pre-registration is requested for food count purposes. Visit kansascommodityclassic.com to register. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Kermit and Connie Dorf are a fourth-generation farm family in Saline County. They have a diversified farm consisting of a cow-calf operation with both dry land and irrigated cropland. They also raise wheat, milo, soybeans, and alfalfa. Connie and Kermit are active in Farm Bureau, serving in many positions on the Saline County Board. Connie has served a three-year term on the State Farm Bureau Membership and Promotion Committee. Currently, she serves on the Soybean and Oils Ag Advisory Committee. Both Connie and Kermit have attended numerous annual state meetings. The couple are lifelong members of the Assyria Lutheran Church and serve on many other community boards, such as the Saline County Conservation Board, Smoky Valley Irrigation Board, and the Kansas Bankers Association. Connie and Kermit believe that educating those not involved in the agricultural industry through Kansas Farm Bureau is vital in keeping family farms operable and will help to continue their mission. Kansans have a new choice for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans. With Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans from Kansas Farm Bureau, you have access to four levels of coverage, affordable rates, and service from an organization that served Kansans for more than 100 years. For more information on Kansas Farm Bureau Medicare Supplement Plans, including rates and to apply, visit kfbhealthplans.com. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. priority diseases in cattle and swine will be tackled by three researchers in the Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine. The research will be funded by grants totaling nearly $1 million from the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. Two of the projects focus on foot and mouth disease, which affects livestock production in many regions of the world, including much of Asia and Africa. 
With the disease being highly transmittable, it would severely impair livestock health and production if introduced into the U.S. Therefore, one of the goals of this research is to model outbreak and control scenarios in the U.S. to improve preparedness and identify optimal disease response strategies to mitigate the impacts of a potential foot and mouth disease outbreak. Additionally, researchers hope to support the development of FMD vaccine candidates and help generate new knowledge on next generation vaccines that ultimately will help prevent and control foot and mouth disease. The third research project is centered on the development of control strategies against African swine fever, which has become a major issue in China and other Asian countries. The focus of this research will be on further improving testing and vaccination for the disease. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Hello, this is Kent Barnard with Paragon Ag. We just got through the highly anticipated January Wazda report which ended up not being as exciting as some may have hoped. The report was neutral to slightly bearish for corn and soybeans due to production increases and only slightly bullish for wheat. From here, all eyes are turning to see the effect of the Chinese trade deal. Now is the time of year that most producers are thinking about what things they can do better. In the grain marketing world, a lot of attention is put on getting the highest price per bushel and pricing in the top half or third of the market. While price is important, the real number that means the most at the end of the day is margin per acre. That is a number that pays the bills and hopefully puts some money in the bank when all is said and done. The components of yield, quality, cost of production, and price all need to line up for that to happen. After all, above average yields at a marginal price can bring the same revenue to an operation as poor yields and high price. The ag industry is progressing with technology and achieving high yielding, high quality crops with less inputs when mother nature cooperates. Risk management can be the last part of the equation. Using the tools available to take action as opportunities come along in the marketing year can secure revenue and a positive margin per acre. One thing to be sure of is that 2020 will be like other years with many factors affecting the markets causing price fluctuations as the year commences. As you look to do a little better in your grain marketing, Feel free to give us a call here at Paragon Ag. The number is 888-452-8751 or visit our website at myagadvisor.com. Thanks, and I hope you have a great start to your new year. Well, that's this week's program. Be social with us at kansasagreport.net and on Facebook and Twitter. Next week, we'll celebrate the 100 years of the American Soybean Association with Barton County farmer Charles Atkinson. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.